I'm Melissa Cage from Hat to Hem, and today I'm going to show you how I recreated Mina's green walking dress. This gown is based on one worn by Renona Ryder in the 1992 gothic horror film Bram Stoker's Dracula. The gown was designed by Iko Ishioka, who won the Academy Award for the costumes you designed for the film. Last time I showed you how I made Mina's underskirt. If you're interested in that video or the one where I made the overskirt, check out the Making Mina playlist. Today I'm going to focus on a completely different area of the gown. I'm going to focus on the embroidery. This took a lot of time. It was a lengthy process and I had to pretty much teach myself how to do a big chunk of it. So hopefully the video clips make sense. Let's just get started. To start off, I did a rough sketch directly on my mock-up. I thought I had a clip of this, but I couldn't find it, so sorry. I scanned the sketch to my computer and I edited the outline in GIMP so I'd have a nice clean image to work with. I like using GIMP because it's free and I've been using it since high school, so I'm fairly familiar with the features. At this point, I've been using GIMP longer than I've been sewing. This was a slow process though, especially since this was the first piece that I did the outline for, so I was still kind of reacquainting myself with GIMP, so this takes a little bit of time. I actually sped this video up to 10 times speed and it still took over a minute to do this little section. If you thought that took a while, just you wait, because I still have to do this in Embrilliance. I tried to work by section with this part, outlining the stem first, then the black part of leaves, then the olive green inside part of leaves. Then I duplicated and flipped the half of the design that I already worked on so I could have the finished design. This saved time and made sure everything was nice and symmetrical. Here I'm running the stitch simulator to make sure everything is in the correct order. I had to change the hoop size to the multi-hoop option and adjust the scale to what I wanted. I printed out the design so I can confirm that everything was the size I needed it to be. This took a surprisingly long time as you can see from this clip. Okay, I had to leave for work in five minutes, so I'm going to try and make this quick. What I have left to do is obviously to finish the bodice. It's going to need boning, sleeves, a front, and uh, this is all going to be embroidery. It took me about six attempts to get that to the right size and everything, so that was fun. Once everything was good, I was able to hook up my embroidery machine to my laptop and transfer the files over. I was able to access the files and move on to prepping my fabric. For this next part, I needed my fabric, an embroidery hoop, sticky stabilizer, thread, scissors, pins, and a seam ripper. The first thing I did was cut a piece of stabilizer the length of the hoop. Without removing the paper backing, I pressed the stabilizer backing side up into my hoop. Once it's secure in the hoop, I scored the backing along the edge with a seam ripper or scissors. Honestly, I just used whichever was closest to me. And then I peeled the backing away. I pressed the fabric against the sticky stabilizer and I made sure to keep it nice and smooth. 
Okay, prep work is done. Time to thread the machine and get to work. Once the first section of the embroidery is done, it makes a guideline that you can use to line up the next section. I decided to set up the next section right away before working on trimming the extra threads on the finished piece. I used my scissors and my seam ripper for this, and I was careful not to remove the guideline. I repeated the stabilizer steps and I put it back in my machine for a new guideline. Now I had the fun task of matching up the guidelines. This was probably the worst part of the whole process. I tried a few different approaches, and I think the one that worked best was putting pins in the center and sides of the old guideline while trying to match it up with the same points on the new guideline. It still took a bit of trial and error, and watching this reminds me of how glad I am that this part of the commission is over. And back to the machine. Once I was finished with the black thread, I swapped the bobbin and cone for an olive green thread to do the center sections. Finally the hard part is over, at least for this piece. I removed the extra threads and I peeled off as much of the stabilizer as I could. Then I got to repeat everything with the collar and the lapels. So even though this didn't look like it took very long, I had to repeat everything with all six pieces that needed embroidery. The last thing I did was touch up any areas that need a little extra attention. And that's it. Actually, that sounds a little too flippant. It was a lot of work. It took a lot of time. I had to learn a lot. Just doing the embroidery took about two weeks, maybe longer. I actually don't remember. I kind of blocked it from my memory. And that two weeks involves actually doing the embroidery. It did not involve the digitalizing of the design. It didn't include the research it took to learn how to do multi-hooping. It doesn't include how long it took me to realize that the term I was looking for was multi-hooping. Shout out to a nice lady in one of the Facebook groups I'm in who told me that the term I was looking for was multi-hooping. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful or interesting or anything like that, please make sure you like it. Finished photos of the dress are on Instagram and Facebook this time, so you feel free to check that out. I will be posting finished photos in the last video of this series, which is going to be the hat video, which will be in two episodes, I think. Um, I think that's it. All right. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're interested in any more progress videos, and I will see you in two weeks with a new video. Bye!